Hey, what's up guys? Sean Ryan with Vigilance Elite. We've been doing kind of a survival series with former SEAL Jeff Reed who runs Frozen Trident Kennel and uh, we're gonna go over and he's gonna give us kind of a day in the life and a tour of his, what he's got going on here and talk about his how he's gonna become the next Iditarod champion. So let's see what he's got. Hmm. I wonder if he really knows who let the dogs out. Here we go. Okay. Whoa! Whoop, whoop! Come on. What's up, Sean? How's it going, dude? Good, man. Glad you made it to Frozen Trot and Kennel. Awesome. Heck yeah, you want a tour? Hell yeah, I want a tour. All right, well, let's get these guys chained up here and then I'll give you a tour. Come on, guys. Holy cow, dude. Whoop! All right, man. Got the dogs all chained up back to their houses. Let's get them fed. All right, man. Cool. This is our food shed right here. What's up, Mac? Come on. How often do these guys eat? Twice a day. I usually feed them. Depending on if I run in the evening, I, I feed them in the morning, and then I, if I run them in the evening. So if I run them in the morning, I'll, I'll wait, I'll feed them after we get back from a run. If I run them in the evening, I'll feed them at like six or seven o'clock in the morning, then I'll feed them in the evening after I get back from a run. All right. So yeah, so we're just doing a morning feeding right now. I got some leftover water in this bucket, and this is where we store our food at. He's a hungry guy. So what we got, we got two different kinds of food here. And uh, we, this is a 30-20, this is what looks like dry, and then we soak it overnight. So it helps, that helps with the hydration, keeps the dogs hydrated. And uh, this stuff right here is high in fat, high in calories, more so than this, but doesn't soak right. So I kind of mix the two just to get them the right nutrients that they need, because these guys are like professional athletes, they're on a strict program when they start training and their nutrition is, is key. Yeah, so that's why this is all important, to make sure they're, they're uh, healthy because the key to a healthy dog starts from the inside yeah so right now I'm just adding extra fat and extra calories to the dog so I usually get you a little bit like that and, a handful. Yeah. and then bring it back out here just top it off with water because it's key to keep them hydrated so you hydrate them with the food yeah and okay. I also as long as it's not below freezing, they have water in their dishes all oh. the time. Once it starts freezing though, you can't have that because they can't even drink it. So this is how you get them to stay hydrated, mixing the water with their food. And uh, the reason I do this year round is because it, it's consistency, you know, like you're, you're on the same food. It, it, it's not weird then when you start switching up to soap food, kind of makes them want to eat it. Nothing's new to them. It's the same stuff they're used to. And I just stir it up, kind of get all the flavors to mix. Looks delicious. It does. I'd eat no, it. I'm starving. <laughs> Want to sample it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go get them fed. How many dogs you got? Got uh, right now in here, we have uh, 15 dogs. We have a small pup inside, and we're getting another dog here soon. So we'll be up to 17 here by the time we start training. Wow. And you know all of them, huh? Yeah. You know them all by the different barks and their different gates and. It's just like being in a platoon. You work with them so frequently that you know who somebody is on nods as, as they're silhouetted, just by their mannerisms and stuff. It's the same with the dog. Having a rough day. This is Stella. This is the newest member of Frozen Trident. She's just a, a little pup, but we have high hopes for her. We we do a lot of training with her still. We we uh, do a lot of puppy walks. We work on recall. We make sure she listens to us and comes whenever she's called. And she's just a great dog. She's happy. She loves to play. And right now she's a cutie. Yeah. How quick is she gonna grow? Pretty quick. She won't do any real running until probably 
I don't know, I'd say end of February. Well, I mean, that's really that like, quick. Yeah, well, it'll be it'll be uh, kind of short runs, and it'll probably just be with her. And Jerry will that's like Jerry's will be working mostly with her. She'll throw on her cross country skis, tie a, a rope to her, hook her up with a harness, and then she'll pull, try to get her to pull Jerry on uh, some skis. But this right here is where we uh, keep our most of our dog food before we need it. Um, oh, okay. We have to order it because they eat so much. We order our, our dog food by the ton, and uh, by so, the t like by the ton. By the ton. So these are forty pound bags, so we get like fifty bags. How much does a ton take up in here? Like the oh, whole well, room? Oh, it's will stack. Yeah, this will be stacked up to here. Wow. Yeah, we, and that that'll last us right now. It's hard to really say because we keep adding more and more dogs. So, so uh, right now performance. Supplements, huh? Yeah, that's their that's their uh, protein shake right here. That's their and that's their uh, would be like their well that, that that would be like their pre workout. That's their gonna be their protein right there. That's uh, that's their that's the high protein stuff right there. And this is their soap stuff. This is used to get their hydration and there's also calories in that. But that's their main stuff right there. That's when it gets colder and we start doing longer miles, they're gonna be fed mostly that. A little bit less. Of that. Oh, so it constantly goes. All right. Yeah. So it, it's always a, it's change. always like adding and subtracting, and it's got, it goes off of the temperature, how far you're running, uh, the metabolism of each dog. A lot goes into it. But yeah, that's pretty much our feeding setup. I guess I could show you guys the, our sled. That. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is our training sled right here. This is what we use to train. It's kind of lightweight. We have uh, the cheap training runners plastics on it. And uh, yeah, there's not much to this one. Pretty standard with your sled. This is your drag. Pretty much a snow machine track with uh, some bolts going through it. And that's what you use to set your speed. So you hook up, you hook up eight dogs on there and you go, they're going fast. So you, you want to keep them slowed down for a number of different reasons because one, they can get hurt, full muscle going too fast, they can step in a moose hole, they can, they can get hurt if they get out of control. So when I'm running, I usually keep a little bit of weight on here and I'm trying to you know, keep it at a decent speed where I can control them. And then if I want to stop or if I get going too fast, this is the brake. It's just a, pretty much just spikes that stick down and, and uh, bite into the, the ice and snow. And that's, that's how that works. How much does this thing weigh? This thing right here, I don't know, probably 80 pounds. Plus you? Plus me, and then if I throw a 40 pound bag of dog food in there, a, ba a bale of straw, uh, bags of snacks, some of my own extra cold weather gear, some survival stuff in there, this thing could, could weigh 400 pounds with me standing on it. Oh wow. Yeah. So it, it does weigh a good bit, but the dogs, don't have a problem with it. They can pull this that weight at over a thousand miles and do it and do it again and be happy doing it. Wow. They're pretty impressive animals, man. They're, the Alaskan Husky is an awesome dog because they're super tough, but they're super sweet. Like They'll go in there and when they're done running, they'll just lay on your lap and they'll watch TV with you. They're, they're a freaking awesome dog. Yeah. You, tell me about uh, the other day you were talking about like, the trust that between you and the team and yeah, the confidence and so, like them running uh you know through in the night in the blizzards and you just trust them I mean, yeah it's, yeah it's so amazing. there's there's times even during a race if you're not in first wind storms can come in and cover the trail up and you might not even see the trail anymore then you're going off the dog's nose you're trying to figure out where the hard pack is and sometimes like that's all you have is just your dog like, you may not know where the trail is trail markers could get blown over Storms could come in and completely white everything out to where you can't even see the first dogs, your wheel dogs. You can't even know where they're at, so you definitely can't tell where the lead dogs are. So you're just flying blind, essentially, and hoping that your dogs are able to pick up the trail and know which way to go. It's, and that's why like, we spend so much time with these guys inside and in a non, like, it's not all business where we're running and working all the time. It's that whole, same thing as like going out on the weekends with your, your the team, like when you're in a platoon, you know? That's, the, going to the bars, you know, getting into bar fights and drinking and 
that's part of building your, your unit building up. that camaraderie. Yeah, and, and you know, like, the more you work with the dudes, the more you know you get faith in them. So it's the same kind of thing I do here with the dogs. Is I want to have a super tight-knit group, not just between me and the dogs, but the dogs within themselves. they got to trust each other, too. And it's and we're, we're getting to that point. I think these dogs are pretty awesome. We have a pretty good bond here. It's, uh, that's amazing. So what else have we got? I'll show you over here. <clears throat> so what happens sometimes is, uh, as the dogs, if you look at Dancer, if you look at Dancer right now, she's running in circles and she'll do that all day long still. And at, what happens is these chains will wear down and, and eventually she'll break her chain, the chain will break. And then, uh, so this is where we kind of have different tools to fix the chains and and really, like, the dogs get along really well, so if the dog does break a chain, they just run around, and half the time you'll come back and they'll be free, but they'll still just be hanging out in the house. So uh, what we do is if a dog does break their chain, we have these little S-hooks and crimpers and we other chains to fix it up. And, and then right here is where we keep our harnesses. So, like, when we run right now in the fall, everything's wet still. So it's not freezing yet. So we, ha we like to hang these up to dry because what's going to happen here in the next couple weeks is it will be, like, a little above freezing during the daytime. These things will get wet, but at night it'll get below freezing. So when you try to put them on the dogs, they'll be frozen. Uh, so you have to, if when it starts getting to that point, we'll uh, put them in next to the wood stove and, and warm them up overnight and make sure they're all dry for them. And it's just like, I look at it too, is like putting on a, nothing's worse than putting on a wet wetsuit. So I try to, <laughs> try to put the, the, get them as much comfort as I can. Yeah. But that's, this is what the strictly business right here. This is their business suit. All right, so what kind of equipment are these guys wearing? Oh yeah, so when they're here. racing, this is where we keep all of our equipment and stuff. Uh, this are these are our main harnesses. They're pretty old still, but they work. Um, and these right here, if you look, these are our older harnesses. They're kind of broken up, but I use them as parts. Like I can steal snaps and uh, some fabric off these if I need to repair these. And so that's what these for back here. These up here are dog jackets. This is what we put on the dogs whenever it gets like 40 below and there's a bunch of wind, especially if some of our dogs have thinner coats than others. We put that on there to keep them warm and just comfortable, really. That's, that's what we're looking for, is make the dogs as comfortable and as happy as, as they can be. What temperature do they start wearing these at? I throw them on at 20 below. And if I'm camping out, like if, if I'm below. camping out, yeah. Camp outs, eh, if they're resting, I'll put them on a temple. i just keep them comfortable. That's, I think they'd be fine, but you know, I err on the side of just keeping them as happy as I can and as comfortable as I can. But. Right on. Do, they, do you, uh, can you sponsor these dogs? Or I mean, they're pro athletes pretty yeah, much. Yeah, so, so what we're, we do is each dog will have one sponsor. And uh, with that, there's other, there's, there's uh, you'll get a bunch of different things for sponsoring a dog, but that also helps like other people to join our pack because you can't do this by yourselves. I mean, look at all this equipment that's needed. These harnesses are falling apart, they're not, and then these ones are falling apart too that we're stealing pieces from these harnesses to repair them. But yes, yeah, so that's what spon that's what sponsoring a dog will, will go to. All the all the sponsorship money we get just gets put right back in the dogs. And you can see there's a lot of stuff here that, yeah. that we need. It's and like then, any sport. Just like any sport. Uh, these things right here are booties. And these things only, they'll last maybe a run, maybe a, two runs, but then they're done. So, and these things cost eh, like 75 cents a booty to a dollar a booty, and each dog wears four of them. So, yeah. I think you're running, you're running 17 dogs, you go through a lot of booties, especially if you're running every day. So, that's a, that's a big, big money right there. It's, it's just in booties like that. But luckily, Jerry can sew, so he'll still stitch them up every now and then when we need to. And, right on. And, uh, but yeah. <laughs> well, these are our main harnesses here. You want to take them? Yeah. And then uh, we'll take them. Running them? Yeah, let's go get them out. Awesome. <laughs>